In a recent video, I made this annoying little object. It's basically just a metal box with a ball in it that I put some markings on to make it look a bit like a dice, but it's not a dice. But while I was making this, in the video, you will see that I used a blowtorch to change the colour of the steel. And I had a comment that said, why does steel change its colour when you heat it? And I thought, that's a really good question I can answer. And I'm going to answer this on quite basic terms. This is a very complicated subject if you want it to be. But the truth of it is, it's actually quite simple why it changes colour. I think most people are aware that steel, when you heat it, goes different colours. As you can see here, we've got some, some straws, some gold, some purples and some blues. Uh, this was caused by welding near it. Uh, this is a weight holding something down and the heat soaking through it heated it up. I believe people learn things far better when they get to see them. So what I'm going to do, is I've got a piece of mild steel here, and I'm going to heat it with a blowtorch from the back on the top section here. And what you're going to see is this will change colour first, and it's going to go yellow, and then a gold, and then it's going to go into like blues and purples, and then you'll see a seam line of those temperatures running down the front. And that's going to be because the heat is, obviously it's starting to soak through the material. And that temperature line will show up as a different colour. We'll explain exactly what that is later on. That's the point of this video. But first, let's get our flame on. Okay, we're starting to get some colours now. I've just knocked the exposure down because I want to show you the incandescent colours. Okay, this might be not showing up too well on camera, but you will have noticed, you know, hot steel glows orange. So this top section went from the silver to the yellows to the the blues, the purples, and then it went to orange and reds. We'll talk about that later, but just make sure you remember that. Now with this piece of mild steel rod, I'm gonna try and heat it evenly and get one even tone. Okay, so you can see now we've got mostly blue in this section, and then we've got a really nice transition here. Hopefully on the other camera this is going to show up better in the close-up. So let's go to the bench and explain exactly why that looks blue, and why that bit looks brown, and that bit looks whatever colour it looks. Okay, to explain this, first we're going to have to explain colours. Why do these handles of these wire strippers look red? There is a simple answer for this. Light is made up of red, green, and blue light. It's a spectrum. And the combination of those makes all the other colours. So say this is the surface of those handles, and you've got red, green, and blue. Red, green, blue. Blue light shining on the surface of the handle. Well, because of the properties of this material, it only reflects the red light. It absorbs the green and it absorbs the blue. So what you see, reflecting off of it, the white spectrum of light is broken, and you see red. Exactly the same if you see something and it's blue, it's because it blocks out the red and the green and then you're just seeing the blue. So that's kind of how colours work. So now if you think about clean metal, like this piece of stainless steel, what colour is it? Well, it doesn't really have a colour, it's kind of white. That's because it's reflecting nearly all of the light that hits it. The reason that it looks slightly grey is because not all the light is coming back, so you're getting a bit of darkening. So that's why metal looks silver. So if you imagine a flat piece of clean steel, you have red, green, blue coming in, and most of that is coming back out, but just a little bit less. So you're still getting the same colour of light, white light, but you're getting a little bit less of it so it looks like a grey. So this is where we answer the question, why is this bit yellow, why is this bit blue, why is it any colour at all? Normal carbon steel reacts with oxygen when it's heated to these temperatures you're seeing on this chart. So you can tell what temperature the metal is depending on the colour that it is at the time and that's why you're getting the variety of colours because you're getting different temperature ranges as the heat went through it. But why are they different colours? Don't worry, I'm... I've definitely got a rat in my garage. Okay, so let's say we heated the steel up to 270 degrees. 
we're going to get a purple colour. And that's caused by the fact that the steel starts to oxidise and just a very thin layer on the surface causes some uh, changes in the iron and it causes an oxi oxidisation layer as it reacts with the oxygen and you get this very thin film on the top of the, of the steel. But it's literally molecules thick. But it changes the way that the light comes in. So the light comes in and then some of it, depending on the temperature the steel was at the time, blocks out some of the other colours. So, so basically the reason steel changes colour is because the oxidisation layer builds up on it as it gets up to certain temperatures and as that gets thicker that changes how much light gets in and changes the ratios of red, green and blue that you see being reflected back out. So if we look at the chart again you're going to see how it goes from the yellows, goes to the browns, goes to the purples, goes to blues, then it goes to grey, then it goes to reds. Now the reds aren't actual reds they are incandescent colours. It's when the, the metal heats so much that it starts to glow, you know, glowing orange steel. They are colours because it's just a different wavelength of light. Temperatures below 427 degrees produce oxidisation colours, so actual physical colours like what we're seeing on here. Uh, and anything above 427 is going into the, into the incandescent area where the oranges and the reds on the chart are actually representing glowing metal. Okay, so let's look at the pieces of metal that we heated up more closely. Try and get it in a good place. Okay, so you know we heated it from this end. So all the colours started from here. So if you imagine this is the hottest end and this is the coldest end, you can now see that chart colour. Yellows into blues uh, into pur and purples. So as the oxidisation layer thickness changed as it went through, it changed the colour that you see. And that's been caught as a, like a, a picture of the transition. So with this piece, I heated it all to the same temperature roughly, and we got, well actually, now we've got two colours. Look, we've got purple on this side, and we've got blue on this side, because I only heated it from one side. But you can see where I did it evenly, we've got a more even tone throughout, but then you can still see that nice transition phase through here. So you should now understand that the reason why you're seeing different colours is because you've got different thicknesses of oxidisation layers, and they're closely representing the temperature that it got to at the time. Now, this is a trick that's been used by blacksmiths and knife makers and sword makers for, for a very long time. The colour is very relevant to the whole process of hardening steel uh, because you need to get it to a set temperature and people for a very long time have used these colours as a way of visual, visually knowing what temperature the metal is. So in the past it wouldn't have been get it to 270 degrees and blah blah, it would have been wait till it's straw yellow then do it. What that causes is a change in the crystal structure of the steel and then you end up with hardened steel which basically means that the structure is much stronger and it's much harder uh, but then it becomes more brittle. There are other things you can do with steel called annealing where you basically soften the whole lot. You can, you can harden all the way through things, you can partially harden stuff. This will actually be different tempers now because this bit's heated up and this bit hasn't been heated up. Now examples of where you'd want something that was hardened metal, well a file. You want that to dig through softer metals. Well if this is harder and this is softer, when you rub them together, this is the thing that will be worn away. That's why if you want to cut something that's very, very hard, use diamond because that's the hardest thing you can use. And to give you a very nice, clear example of how and why you might want to change the hardness, thus know the temperature, is let's give an example of a samurai sword. So we're going to just imagine this is the, the profile of the blade. You've got the sort of bevel along here, so this is the sharp edge here this side and then you'll notice you have these sort of weird markings along the top edge of the blade. What they want to do is they want to harden the front edge of the blade so it holds its edge so it's strong and it can be sharpened to a very nice point and it's not going to get dull by chopping through things too easily. Whereas if you had something, a knife made of say lead, you can imagine when it's very soft, if you hit something with it it's just going to keep denting and disforming and the edge is going to get rolled over and it's not going to be very sharp anymore. As I mentioned, hardened steel is extremely brittle, so you don't want to have an entire sword made of very hard, brittle steel, because when you hit it against someone else's sword or it gets hit against something, it will shatter. So what they used to do was they would cover the top edge of the blade with clay. So when they heat the blade, you get a differential between how hot each bit is. This is obviously thinner, and this is thicker. This is already protected with the clay, so this is going to get much, sorry, this edge is going to get much hotter than this edge. Then what they do is they quench it in water or oil or whatever they use. Uh, and you can actually watch this happen. There's a, there's a great video of someone quenching a samurai sword and it's basically straight. And as it goes into the water you watch the blade curve up and then it relaxes back down again. And that's how they get the curve into the samurai sword. It's caused by the hardening process and the differential between the spine and the front edge. Now, 
The reason they want to do that, as I say, is because by having soft, pliable metal on the rear of the, bl of the blade and hard sh uh, metal at the front edge of the blade, you have a hard cutting edge, but it still remains a flexible sword. And they would have worked out when was the right time to do that, possibly by the colour of the steel at the time. Now, as I said, this is a very basic surface level explanation, so anyone who's not necessarily that interested but just wants a short answer, although this video might not, not, not be as short as you wish, um, that is why steel changes colour. Yes, other st uh, metals do change colour as well. Titanium goes from lovely colours. Stainless steel also goes lovely colours. But it takes higher temperatures because they have less iron in them, to my understanding. Uh, that's why they're corrosion resistant. Because obviously, the more iron you have in something... If you have something that's straight iron, it rusts, it oxidises very freely. If you have normal steel, well, you know, that's going to rust eventually, but not so quickly. Stainless steel shouldn't rust for a long while anyway, depending on the quality. And the quality of stainless steels is generally down to the, the combinations of the metals that are in them. The best quality stainless steels that really don't rust are you know, very expensive because of the blends that are in them. And I don't think there's much more to say than that. If you found this video interesting, please, please do hit that like button. Maybe subscribe to my channel. I am actually a motorcycle vlogger, but I also do metal art and I do ma making things and fabrication stuff. I'm a bit of a nerd on a lot of different things. And if you really like my content, well then maybe consider joining my Patreon. It's only $1 a month, and it helps me continue to make these videos. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time. If you enjoyed this video and the other content on the channel, please consider following the links in the description to show your support.